Good afternoon, this is Steve Young for the Go Roundtable. Just another short video talk on um, a recent development or some recent developments in the news about capitalism with reference to the, our concept of moral capitalism. Uh, the first set of stories, three stories, involve valuation. How much is a company worth? And this, uh, I argue, gets to the heart of capitalism, moral or immoral. And it focuses on the juncture or the, 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 the bad fit between the real economy, some people say, and the world of finance, Wall Street, stock markets, uh, contract rights, which people buy and sell, and they have value, the price. Um, what's the relationship between the price of stock or other instruments and the company itself? Um, how do you calculate the worth of a company? And what is the goal of a company? Milton Friedman said that the goal of a company is to make profits. Uh, but why do you have profits? Because profits, uh, allegedly, they can get shared, but also they add to the asset value of the company. And a more expensive, a more valuable company, presumably, is going to make better profits. So one issue that came up, and it's very common, is um, when one company is up for sale. So it was reported that Kansas City Southern which is a railroad company in the United States, rejected an offer to buy it at $20 billion. $20 billion is not a small sum of money, but the company felt that was undervaluing the company. Well, how do you value a railroad? Another instance of this, which was not a private transaction, where two sides, Kansas City Southern and the buyers, negotiated price, but a stock market, a public offering. A new company, a new high-tech company, Snowflake, which, which has a data warehousing. Doesn't sound very sexy to me, but apparently a lot of companies want to use data warehousing. So Snowflake provides these services. I must have a lot of servers and things like that somewhere. Uh, sounds very routine and mundane, uh, but they sold shares of stock to the public and the stock price rose immediately, valuing Snowflake at $70.4 billion. This is a debut. The company doesn't have that long a track record. So we have to ask ourselves, how much income is it going to have to generate uh, every year for the foreseeable future to justify buying the company total for $70 billion? Is this is this a slam dunk? Is this going to be another disappointment when something happens and they do not meet their revenue projections? Basically, who knows? How should we think about this? If you don't know the price of a company, how do you know you're doing a good job? Or if you're owning a company or running a company, how can you increase its value so that you know you're creating wealth for yourself, your employees, uh, good products for your customers and for society. Another interesting example of valuation is a dispute between two luxury uh, houses. One is Tiffany's and the other is the French company uh, LVMH. Now LVMH and Tiffany's negotiated a deal that LVMH would buy Tiffany's for $16.2 billion. That's a lot of money in order to gain ownership over the revenues to be generated by Tiffany's in the future. Now there are lawsuits. So the first thing that happened apparently was that the French government in a tiff with the Trump administration over tariffs used administrative actions in France to delay approval of the deal until after the, the date set by the two parties. And so, LVMH sort of used that as a way of saying, no, no, we're, we don't want to do the deal anymore. So Tiffany's then sued them. Then what happened is LVMH alleged that Tiffany's had been mismanaged during the pandemic, the, the COVID-19 pandemic in the United States, and its prospects for future earnings had gone way, way down. That this was a, an unexpected material change in the assumption supporting the contract. And so now LVMH is asserting it can walk. It doesn't have to live up to its province, uh, promises. So uh, 
it's suing Tiffany's and Tiffany is suing it. And LBMH is, is making the argument in a court in America that its expectation of future returns is a material aspect of a contract. In other words, it can breach a contract with no consequences. Um, valuation, I would submit, is fundamental to understanding how capitalism works.